day, more than one billion people around the globe lack adequate drinking water. But in Singapore, 98% of the people are satisfied with the quality of their water. Now that's compared to some neighboring Asian countries, where as few as 35% of the people say they're satisfied with the quality of their water. They treat it well, they protect it, they have controls on what's allowed to go into the sewage plants, the industrial discharges are controlled. The other thing they do extremely well is they're thinking into the future. They're anticipating the growth and they're uh, making sure that they're going to have enough water in the future. While Singapore is now a leader in water technology, that hasn't always been the case. I visited one of Singapore's four new water plants. New water is recycled sewage water that is made potable through a three-stage process, meeting World Health Organization standards. So this is the first step of your process. So what do you do here? This is a microfiltration process. Okay. Its purpose is to remove the suspended solid and also the uh, bigger particle size of the uh, bigger molecular size of the uh, viruses and bacteria. So this is the second part of the process, which yeah. you guys call reverse osmosis. So what does that mean? Okay, so this process will further remove the microorganism that inside the water and the smaller part of the particle molecule of the water to remove that. So this process will only allow water molecules to pass through. So after this, the water is essentially clean? It's basically as good as new water standard. Okay. And of course, for us, we have to do one more step to make sure that nothing will go wrong. It's an ultraviolet process. So you're actually applying ultraviolet light to the water? Yes. In fact, all these tubes are actually the ultraviolet light tubes. Mm -hmm. So the, the system is on, the water just passes through the tube, and ultraviolet will inactivate the water material. So it would be sort of killing any bacteria that's left. Right. New water is an essential part of Singapore's plan to be totally self-sufficient in water resources by the year 2061. The question now is, can countries in the most struggling regions of the world, like Sub-Saharan Africa, develop similar methods of production to improve the quality of their water? You have different situations. You have a situation where there's not enough water. Okay, the quantity is limited. And then you have other situations where there's water, but it's contaminated. If you have water and it's contaminated, there are reasonably efficient ways and, and relatively low-cost ways to treat that water so that it's portable. Now it's most attractive to uh, highly developed countries that are relatively water short or countries like uh, in the Middle East where they are water short, but they also have resources that allow them to use whatever is appropriate.